consistent naming. The structure is done, but somebody wants a naming scheme on these things and they shouldn't match. So first of all, F3 allows you to show the labels as they are at the moment. And we want to make sure that these uh, actually match, and they do, and they will only match if there's no Q peak showing on the screen and if all the hydrogens match, of course. Okay, we've got a naming scheme. So this is based on one. So this is C18, 17, 16, and 28, 27, and so on. Now that's quite sensible, but you might not want this, or maybe you started with random names and you want to generate something like this. So let's play with some of the options. One of the options is to transfer this naming scheme of this molecule onto that molecule. So I'm clicking on one atom in this, on any one atom on this, it doesn't matter which one. And here the command is, match minus n because you want to play with the name that's why it's n equals and any letter you type now or any, any symbol you type now that will become a suffix so this here will become o that's an 11 here so it will be o11 but followed by a so this is o11a and now this is of course o11 so how do i transfer now this to here I can click on this, there's a number of ways of doing this. One of them is uh, this one, but I'll show you a different way. You can click on this one all the way and it's literally just name minus n minus s for suffix equals uh, we want to be. So this is the other way of doing this for one particular uh, entity. So there's no transferring of name, but we now have consistent naming in that sense. If you want to get rid of this again, you, sub, you double click this and it's the up key and you just don't have a suffix. So that deletes the suffix again. And we can do the same here and we get rid of the A. So now we've got the same names. That's of course not very good, but maybe we want to go back to the system of having ones and twos. How do you do this? Again, we take this as the base. So we're starting the naming from here. We transfer it over to here. And now we're back to mode match much minus n but now we use a dollar and that means the first character after the element symbols symbol uh, uh, letters is uh, replaced so if you now make this uh, two then the one here will be replaced and over there there will be two so we're now back to the naming scheme that we had on initially so it's quite flexible is a little bit confusing sometimes but there is a bit of help so if you click on this info symbol in work naming there is actually a fair bit of help so if you if you lost you can have a look over there now another approach to all of this entirely is using the regu approach and the way you do this is you just take one of those um, molecules and you make this um, did I say regu I didn't mean regu I mean the resi approach so we have like a residue it comes from residue in the in the um, in the protein crystallography world where you have 20 amino acids residues uh, so these are recurring uh, bits in your structure so here you can look at this whole molecule as being a residue and this could also be a ligand so you might have uh, four ligands on a metal and then you can deal with them in exactly the same way so double click on this and the command is resi Minus all, well, uh, apologize, so we need a name first, so let's just call it mol for molecule. I think you can use three characters, but maybe four. Resimol minus all. So this will now find all of these residues in your structure. So this one, it will find the two of them. And the labels are still showing the way they are, but you might have noticed they actually changed to the same. So we've got now 18, 17, and so on. If you go over to uh, toolbox work and look at the labels there is the option of having the residue numbers and you will see this is now residue one and this is residue two otherwise the labels are exactly the same so if you just go for the names the atom names then you will find they're identical now internally of course they're called slightly differently and they've got the underscore for the resi one and the underscore two for the resi two if you go to the drawing area and you want to draw this and let's say you select all the hetero um, atoms, if you do this, you will see the underscores with it. So this is the uh, th this is automatically done here. Now, if you wanted, uh, if you didn't want these uh, residues here uh, everywhere, one way of doing it is double click on this and you can, of course, edit this label and uh, just get rid of the residue. It's a little bit cumbersome. There is actually a way of doing this without the residue number, but I 
must admit, I don't remember right now. Well, I do remember. So we can do this this way. Another way of doing would be to say, OK, I'm stealing a label. So I double click on here and go label. So this gives me this label of H11. So you could put this in here and actually type something like resi1 or, or something like this or rn residue number. And then you could put this somewhere in your in your in your drawing. It's not all that pretty, but you can put this somewhere in your drawing and then it might become clear that this is uh, that. So these labels here, these are the actual printing labels and shift and, and the left mouse. You can move them about and F3, of course, switches off these working labels and these ones you can just move a shift and the left mouse in the in the right place so there's a number of options here well uh, how i uh, how i got this label here with he I, I noticed that so you can double click on that control a will now select all the labels delete deletes all the labels if you go sell dollar n dollar f dollar o so these are all the hatch for atoms we've got in here and type label without any uh, extensions, then you just get the normal labels without the residue number, which of course is a bit confusing. Okay, so it's consistently labeled and named. However, of course, now these atom names have become longer. They've got the residue uh, num with it. That really does lose a little bit of flexibility and makes the tables a bit more ugly. And uh, for this kind of work, I'm not so sure whether the resi is the way to go. Um, the other tools of naming things, as I showed earlier, are probably quite adequate to deal with these kind of structures. Okay, I hope this was useful and thanks for using Olix too.